Hello everybody, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead and today I'm gonna show you a super easy way to create protection for your brassicas. These are my broccoli plants and as you can tell, they are huge. Well, I had purchased a floating row cover from Amazon and it had these tiny little fiberglass posts. And what was happening is, my broccoli was taller than them. And so they were starting to break off and I decided I'm going back to what I've always done and make my own. Here's a picture of that really cheap floating row cover that I got off of Amazon. The posts are too flimsy. They kept falling over. They're only about a foot long and you have to tape them together. And it's very short. It's probably only about two feet off the ground. Instead, I'm gonna make my own. I had everything I needed on hand. So the first thing that you use are these little garden stakes. They are cheap, readily available. And so what I did is I pounded it into the hole that I actually had the other frame in. So I just pounded these into the ground. I am using PVC pipes that I already had on hand. They are one half inch by 10 feet. Slide the PVC pole down over that garden stake. And what I even do is I push it down into the ground. Then I bend the other side and put it onto the other stake. From here, I just push it on down to the ground till I have both sides and I push it down in there and that will keep it firm. And now looking back, you can see all my PVC pipes are bent and in the ground. Now I'm gonna cover them up. If this is the first time you are using a floating row cover, I highly recommend that you look at every single leaf of your brassicas to make sure you don't have cabbage worms. Um, if you have worms and then you cover it up, they're gonna have a picnic. So make sure there are no bugs on your plants. And this is one of the reasons I love floating row covers. I am finally able to grow my cabbage again, and that is because I don't have the worms eating them. If you do see damage on your leaves, there's a couple things you can do. You can pick off all the green worms, but I'll tell you, they're hard to find. Um, you can also use neem oil, which is approved for organic gardening. Now this was the cover that came in that package that I ordered from Amazon. So I will use this cover again. If you don't have access to a floating row cover. What you can do is go to a sewing store and purchase some kind of mesh fabric that is really fine so the insects cannot get through it. Now the fabric that I had purchased to go over my floating row cover is this fabric right here. Multi-purpose craft material. Um, it is very, very lightweight. Comes in all different colors and types, but it's fairly inexpensive. Now, of course, it's also pretty cheap, so it's easy to rip, but this works out pretty well if you're looking to stay on a budget. Now, before I cover it, I wanna show you a difference here. This plant was not in the floating row cover. This is just outside of it. And if you look next to it, these were, these broccoli plants and cauliflower plants are twice, actually three times bigger than the ones next to them that were not covered up. As I was covering up this new frame that is far taller than the frame that came with the kit, I realized I have a lot of extra fabric. And so these sad six cauliflower plants were sticking out before. I have sprayed them down heavily with neem oil and I'm gonna build a frame to include them into the floating row cover. And since I use woven weave fabric, I need to burn the holes that I'm going to stick those posts into. So I'm gonna go beyond my cauliflower so that I have room that it won't rub against the edge of my mat, and I'm gonna burn those holes in. And I burned two holes in, so now I'm going to hammer down some new stakes. The clips that I'm using come from Dollar Tree and they fit perfectly onto the frame. So if you just squeeze it, there we go. I can show you, they go on very easily and they hold it in place. So 
at this point, I'm gonna put clips all along the frame. I'm gonna start at one end and tighten it as I go. This is already so much better than what I had before. Now these uh, posts that I have and they curve around in the frame is twice as high as what the other one was I purchased from Amazon. Uh, what I did on the end here is I tied both ends into a knot. And so I am gonna hammer that down with a landscape uh, staple right now. So I'm gonna put that down so it doesn't move. And I left that staple sticking up just a little bit. So if I wanna open this up to look at my plants, make sure they're doing well, I can pull that out easily. All right, I am very pleased with this floating row cover. Um, but what they always tell you is you get what you paid for. And this one from Amazon, uh, just didn't last so well. So I need to do a quick repair on that. I'm probably just gonna use duct tape because duct tape works for everything. But other than that, it's going to work out very well for this year. I had hoped to get several years out of it. Mm -mm, it's not gonna happen. But thankfully I know how to make the frame and I can get more fabric to cover it up. And there you have it, a simple way to make a floating row cover that only takes a few basic things. Actually, all of these items I had in my barn, so we weren't going out and purchasing anything. Um, but it is something that will last many years. You're gonna have to buy a new cover, but the frames last for at least five years. And I put that together in about 45 minutes by myself, and it has me motivated. Uh, these are my Brussels sprouts and I didn't cover them originally because they were going to get way too high. But this frame is at least five feet in the center. Uh, it was a 10 foot post or pole, so maybe four and a half feet. But either way, it's very tall. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cover up my Brussels sprouts. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and share. And as always, have a blessed day. Bye-bye, everybody.